Hello, uh, how are you? Uh, my name's Phil Earl, and I'm here just to talk to you briefly this morning about this book, uh, what I wrote called When the Sky Falls. And then the reason I felt able to write this book all comes back to this almost like a motto that I have about writing that I use a lot when I talk in schools and in libraries, which is that the wonderful thing about writing is that uh, there's nothing you can't write about that we're surrounded by stories every single second of our lives, when we're awake and when we're asleep. Uh, those stories are out there, um, just waiting for us to spot and write down. And I talk to students about the fact that the only thing that will ever stop you from, from spotting these stories, even when you're in junior school, uh, are these things. And I'm terrible with this. I walk down the uh, street every day, texting and, and tweeting and WhatsApping and Instagramming. I don't TikTok, that, that'd be a bridge too far. But... Uh, if you put your phone in your pocket for 10 minutes every day as you walk down the street, you will see these stories waiting for you to spot them and write them down. The tiniest, most mundane thing in life can be the starting point for a terrific adventure. And this is a really good example of that for me. This book all came about from a very innocent conversation uh, with a friend on a campsite a few years ago. My friend had grown up during the Second World War uh, and his dad was unable to fight due to ill health. But he was part of the home guard. And every time the air raid siren rang, his dad's job was to grab a rifle and leg it to the local zoo. Why? Because when he got there, he had to position himself outside the lion's enclosure with the rifle pointed through the bars at the lion. Because if the Luftwaffe dropped the bomb that blew out the wall to the lion's cage, his dad's job was to shoot the lion before it went on the rampage. And hearing that story for the first time, literally, uh, well, the effect was visceral. I had goosebumps and the hair was standing up on the back of my neck. And, you know, people talk about the Second World War and the amazing stories that there are to come out of that. And it's true. You know, you could talk about, about um, D-Day or, or Pearl Harbor or Dunkirk. But for me, often it's the little moments in life that can be the starting point for these great stories. So I started to think, what if... What if that rifle ended up in the hands of an angry 12-year-old boy instead of a responsible adult? And what if inside the cage, uh, the animal inside the cage wasn't a lion, but an animal that that boy could have built a relationship with? So when those bombs start to fall, could that boy possibly pull the trigger on the one thing in his life to have truly shown him love? And that, of course, became uh, Adonis, the grill. So I really hope that there's plenty for your students uh, to play with here and to study. The book opens, it's told in the third person, the book opens with evacuees being sent out of the big city, apart from one boy whose behaviour is so poor that he's been sent against the tide into the city. So why not ask your students to rewrite that first chapter when this angry boy arrives in the city? Why not write it from his perspective? Why not see it through his eyes, for example? Or even more so, why don't you look at the first time that Joseph and Adonis the gorilla meet and retell that chapter from the gorilla's point of view? There's plenty to get your teeth into it here. Obviously, uh, well, I would say that, but I really hope there's stuff here about, about empathy and about anger and about speaking your mind and about resilience. So I really hope that there are themes here that you can get your teeth into. And please do remind your students that they are surrounded by stories. And the great thing about writing is it... It feels like playtime, because at playtime you can go out into the yard and pretend to be whoever you want, go on any imaginative journey that you choose. And it's the same when you're writing. When I'm writing, there's nowhere I can't go, there's nothing I can't do, there's no world I can't create, there's no person I can't pretend to be, alive or dead, fictional or real. The, um, the possibilities are endless. So uh, thank you for listening. I really hope you enjoy When the Sky Falls, and I hope that your students do too. Cheers. Bye-bye.